Great. So I have no slides, um, but I have some code, and I will spend the most of the time just working through that with you. It's going to be about this uh, thing called um, Canvas. And the reason was basically that there, everybody speaks about, so you want to make your site faster, ship less JavaScript. People speak about this kind of clean, old school, nice document, HTML semantics, right? So I was thinking in that context, why should we speak, or how could we speak to something meaningful at a JS meetup? And ended up with this canvas thing, which actually does nothing without JavaScript. So it's kind of an excuse to speak to JavaScript in a pure HTML uh, mindset, right? I'm planning to go through four things, just to be super pedagogic, say what you want to say, say it, and say what you have said. Um, we're going to look at this um, element. We're going to look at what it can do in uh, 2D, some 3D, and how it interfaces with other HTML elements. It's going to be fun, I'm sure. You need to read all, every, all, uh, all the code on the screen, so maybe you should do something like this. Um, is it big enough? Or? Yeah. So um, what you get is basically um, the canvas element. All good so far? So what you put it between them is what happens if the browser for some reason does not support it. Um, if you go to can I use, that's the 1.117 or 17%. Um, so you can use it. Um, let's see what it looks like. So I have this. Um, Uh, that was the first slide, right? Um, so this one. So if you don't do anything, it's gonna be you have here a uh, body which is crimson, and you have a canvas element which is basically this guy. Um, so it's not really a lot at all, right? Um, the people and the text in the inside the canvas is not displayed, so there's nothing here, right? Interesting. The size of it, if you don't do anything, is 300 by 150 pixels. Now, um, we can do a little bit more with that element. Um, so the next page is gonna be um, this guy. Ooh. So basically eight canvases, very scientifically named. Um, all the canvases has this shared uh, CSS definition on them. Um, so they have a transform of region, which means that they sit, uh, where do they sit? Um, on the left, in the middle of the browser. And I have this uh, CSS uh, prop here. So if I change that, these elements now start to move, which is funky. Huh? Um, and with all kind of geometric layouts like this, they will um, eventually end up in super geometric and boring shapes. Um, but that's how it is. Um, what more to say? We can look at how this is constructed just to get a feel for what you can do on a CSS level with that kind of empty canvas tag. This one is not needed. Um, so there's a filter that has the U rotation, so they give different colors. And you see the magic down here of re repeating code. I just multiply with this one incremental thing per instance of the canvas element. Um, so they're all identical. The transform then rotates it by this CSS property multiplied by the instance in the page. The skew thing runs later in exactly the same um, rotation or um, logic. So what can we do here? We can put 90. We can put uh, 180. Ah, that's a lot. 180 should be sufficient. Boom. It's for you guys. Come on, applause now. I'm a super player. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically the uh, CSS of on, uh, simply applying it on that block of 300 kind of by, by, by 150 pixels. Um, on the HTML level, right? Um, 
So somebody should now say this we can do without canon as we can just put a div here and get the exact same result and that's completely correct. So next one. Um, is it dev? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move into the element itself and see what we can do there. Um, I think I'm, I think I noted that this kind of fun fact thing on the beginning here. Um, the element itself was contributed by Apple, which is not that often to be seen. Um, or Tiger, for those of you who are old hats like uh, like me. Um, it basically goes like this. So you can get this kind of context from it. You ask for a 2D context. Now you can use um, super procedural code. Pick a color, paint a rect with it. Pick another color, paint a rect with it, and keep going. And that's basically a 2D API for you. Um, oop, I think this is this one. Beautiful. So the element itself, 300 pixels by 150, two colors, two rects. Great. I'm gonna run out of time very soon, I think. Um, so if we keep on that kind of 2D space, there's a few um, gotchas which I think we should speak to. Um, I'll run this first so you can see what it's supposed to be. Um, you're looking at a container, uh, centered. It has a border, it seems, this guy. So maybe we should not take the border. So the blue is the border, right? The pink is the canvas. Um, now, if we um, look at it, we are actually doing two things. We are saying the, the size of the element on the page so what the, the display width and height should be. And we're saying how big should the actual canvas be? So you can end up in a situation where you have a huge canvas displayed in a really small area. Or the opposite that you have a huge canvas with super low resolution inside it. So that's what I'm gonna show here. Um, but first we must of course paint something. This is exactly the same procedure as last time. You pick a color, you fill out something with it. Um, here we compute something really magical and here we draw this arc, which is the, uh, which is the, yeah, you saw it, the little black guy, right? So, Casper, what's your goal here? Should it be the, what do you have? Three, nine, two, three, five, something like this, I don't know. Should be the tau. Should be tau, exactly. And what is that? Oh, come on. Three times time. Exactly. I have awesome colleagues. <laughs> okay, it was at one before, right? And I was hoping to get this arc to go a, a full round. And it's obviously not one, that's not enough. Um, it's two enough. Getting there is three enough. Look at that. Getting there, no, is five. Anybody wanna guess? Why is that not working? Save time. Turns out it's math.py, right? Boom. No, it's what Casper said, two times pi. Well, say what's our goal. Um, that of course is, yeah, the topic for another discussion. You should read this one. Um, resolution. So this is now dividing by one, which means it, what the, the width and height of the canvas will be exactly the width and height of the bounding rectangle. If you up that to, um, I don't know, six, 16, um, we get this one. So now the circle is really big. Maybe we can, um, can have a smaller line on it. And it's getting jaggy. I'm sure if you can see it on the projection, but it's, it's jaggy. <laughs> Um, and as you recall, this is because we are now having a really small actual canvas inside a huge uh, HTML element. So take away, remember to set the width and height of your canvas to the exact same as the um, element size on the page. Yeah. Now with, these, with this knowledge, we can draw arcs and we can draw squares. Um, I quickly want to bring your attention to this selection of awesome images. 
which usually opens. Really? Okay. This we will not speak to you just yet. Actually, this is Mac OS login. This one, if you're really an old hat, you might remember seeing Pivot 2. <laughs> this is 2004. How old were you at that time? <laughs> this is me making Rex uh, in director at that time with their 2D drawing API for both casts. Um, I could only make Rex, and that seemed to be sufficient. So it works with basically us listening to the, so Tevit has its kind of playlist, XML file with what's going to be aired. So we can look at that file and see what's coming after this show. To make these breakers, we have made um, kind of a artificial intelligence, which was looking at the next show coming up. If it was a playful show, we could make playful rectangles could kind of play with each other, play pong with each other. If everything, they could kind of hide in the corners and suddenly attack you. Know, and, uh. But yeah, rectangles on broadcast, that's all you, all you need. This one is from the opening of the ad uh, concert, who's, what is that? Um, and it's the first kind of event they had um, with the rhythmic music. The first one was classical music and the next week and there was rhythmic. Uh, Petri Gull, 2009. So we're moving into the recent future. Yeah, it's past. Um, what you're seeing is, uh, is this guy, Mike Sheridan. Some of you might know him. And what you're also seeing is me and um, my processing sketch, where I made this little uh, waveform, which is then displayed in the background. So again, rectangles. We can do a lot. Um, where were I? Here, right? Snow, yeah. So let's look at the snow sketch in, in the browser too. So now we're drawing circles and uh, a few of them and um, moving them slightly towards the camera. Camera, right? The viewer. And they're all um, different color and they don't really see sort. Let's fix that. You know what C sorting is, right? So you speak to the Y and the X and the Z. And if you want to sort something on C, you want to C sort it so that the elements that first away is drawn first and everything that's nearer is drawn later, right? So in this awesome sketch, we have an array of uh, stars. Could be snow, maybe. It's a winter theme, so we should call it snow, right? But they all contain a property for X, Y, and Z and the C for color. This is always super confusing. Do you speak to C or to C, right? <laughs> um, which means that, that when that list is uh, about to be drawn, we can use JavaScript's awesome in-place sorting, <laughs> which was usually is a mess, but uh, for this case, it's perfect. Reload, and uh, now elements with a higher C is uh, bit drawn further uh, behind than other ones. Done, right? Um, why was that? That's supposed to be two. One is one. Cool. Three is we can um, we can also enable um, a straight up event listener. We don't need to use add um, react thingies. We can use native thingies. So that this uh, perspective is now controlled with uh, with the mouse, which of course is very funky. So you get all the way from uh, looking at the sky for the funky things falling, or we can uh, also maybe just say 100% brightness, which means they will be white, right? Um, but snow can be done better. It's a good clue, Jacob, thanks. So if we don't draw the shape, but draw an image instead, so new function, draw image. And what is this? The ellipse, the ellipse is a, um, yeah, where is it here? It's an image tag with an ID called ellipse. Easy. And the image you want to see, of course, too. Um, so it's going to be these three guys. We can do something like this, yeah. So we have three of them. This is a 90% uh, opaque one. This is a 50% and this is a 10%. We're using 
using what? We're using the 90. So let's draw that one instead of the, uh, of the arc. And it should probably now look like almost the same. Let's change the image to something softer. What was it? 50? Something that is slightly more blurry. And if we console finder again, there should also be one called 10, right? And now it gets snow. Or this kind of. Um, We're too kind. Um, I also get the Tesla feeling, right? So the, uh, or the runners in the <laughs> Good one. Um, so I get a bit more funky this time. Um, one more demo, which is now going to be called this guy. Because we also make lines, right? Visible, yeah. So it's basically just drawing a line from the previous position to the next one, but it draws a few of them, and each of them have a different um, repulsion factors. So they kind of curve towards the point at different speeds. It's a bit hard to see, actually. Let's try and boost that up somehow. Find color. Can you read this? Yeah, so maybe a bit brighter. Is it brighter? Yeah. Yeah. So mouse toys, a big thing in the 90s. <laughs> and of course, there's an, a project for that too, which is called, ah, oh, that was the other window. Um, boop. I'm not sure if some of you know this institute, CIID. Yeah? No? Ooh, big story. But uh, the logo. Um, is used this exact same code actually. Um, so it comes with all the magic of this, which we all love to see again, right? Mm, our VARs. And somebody was smart to put a let just above it. This JavaScript, right? You can do things like that without getting. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, good. This should move further. I'm spending way much time on this. We should look at 3D too, right? Um, same this beautiful structure. I want to show you this guy. Actually, I will not show you this yet. I will show you something else first. I was pretty sure I had disabled. Where are we? Here. Boom. Start with the boring, right? What you're looking at is a model of the world, and if you are really sharp-eyed or remember the previous screen, you will see that each country has a small extrusion. So it's basically a mesh that is not flat, but it has a some height to it and side walls. And each country has its own um, its, its own mesh. Um, now, at the time I made this, I believe this has been improved since then. It was actually a hassle to get models into uh, into the browser, um, also because the files you could you could read from was just huge. Um, so I have this globe model DIE here, which is yeah. Let's see. It. Um, boom. Lib globe model. So that's an alias. Okay, that's good because it was really small. <laughs> There we are, 4.2 megabytes. But if we uh, look at the, um, this file, which I cannot find anymore, uh, here, it's now one megabyte. So we have saved a lot, right? By stripping out all that is not strictly needed to draw this 3D file in the browser and just making a JSON file ourselves. Okay, it's not JSON file, but it's very close. Um, Good, um, sidetrack. We want to look at this little thing a little bit more. Let's show it to you again. You remember this was set to CM2 before, so that's basically our country material too, obviously, right? Reload now, and you will see that we have um, replaced this boring dull gray texture 
material with our own. And this is something we're gonna speak to a lot. Um, this is using the library called Three, which I assume you have stumbled across. It's by far the most popular kind of easy way into uh, to MGL uh, or Canvas with 3D templates. Um, super awesome. But it allows you to, uh, to make a material using your own kind of uh, vertex shader and normal shader. And for clarity, these are of course not formatted with color coding, but just for old school guys like me. So you basically see a distinction between a vertex and a normal. And it should not be a normal shader source, it should be called a fragment shader source because the fragment shader source is what's responsible to calculate the RGB color of every pixel on screen. And the vertex shader is supposed to calculate where that kind of point should be. All my points here are coming from this model, so it knows where it should be originally. So it's usually it's sufficient just to say where you think you should be. But if you want to put, if you want to put them elsewhere, you can do that with your fragment um, vertex shader. So um, where to go from here? We can enable. Um, I will say one more thing. These three guys are called uniforms in shader language, and um, to us as JavaScript guys, it means basically variables you can change. So having this, this material instantiated on all the models, all the countries on this sphere, we can then speak to the scale, color, or V normal um, uniform on each of them in the, in the independently. And that's cool. Um, so if we, um, if we do that, we are now scaling these um, vertex positions out along their normal axis away from where they thought they should be, just the same place, just further out. And that's, of course, super useless. Um, but we can uh, randomize these. Uh, okay, it's giving it a bit away, it's called extrusions. It means you can probably guess what's coming. But if we start to animate that property of that uniform, of that shader, of that material on that mesh, we can now animate our uh, 3D model. Um, but we can do better. We can also look into the shader and say, uh, what if we uh, don't want to, to uh, change the entire or all the vertices, but only the ones that has a, further, has a set distance from the, um, from the center of the sphere. I call this water height in this shader. But if you recall, my, all my countries has like a, a bottom and then small walls and then the top. So if I manage to put this kind of water height just below the, the floor of it, the top should move, right? So with that, we get extruded countries. And that's pretty cool. I should tell you that this is actually not my shader. Uh, this is made by Joachim Ante, who is the CTO of Unity, a thing you might have known. I met him like, I didn't know, in 2009, I think, on a plane to Shanghai. We were supposed to do an exhibition there. I landed the project, and I was looking for technology, and I, uh, I'm making this game engine. He says, oh, let's have a look, right? So on my wife's computer, because mine was out of battery, he took her computer to the bathroom on the airplane, recorded this shader, and came back and showed me basically this. I was kind of impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos to Joachim Ante. Um, now, where were I supposed to go? Um, this picks. Yeah, more picks. Um, so we are now into here, right? So this very, uh, why does it open two windows? So this very thing about making um, 3D meshes react to code um, made us able to land this project for Volkswagen back in, I don't know, 2006 or something. Here it is. Ooh. Yeah. And this is on the 54 screen wall, um, but it also has this kind of lean back experience. And blah, blah, blah. Here it is even with, uh, with labels, amazing. 
This I should have shown earlier. This is, uh, okay, what I want to look at is of course the, the purple band, right? Everything else is not interesting, but the purple band is key here. Uh, because that's also made um, with that same sketch that made the lines for the CID logo. So you basically move your mouse, find a tangent, um, draw a band to the previous position, and uh, celebrate, right? So with really simple tricks and uh, JavaScript full of let and var, you can do funky, funky things. Now, I'm probably out of time. Um, I want to quickly... I have five more minutes if you want. Sweet. Yeah. Also be... I prepared a little bit about uh, shaders in case you want to speak more to that. Um, maybe you should actually display them too, that's probably easier. Now let's, let's skip that, I'll just explain it quickly here. Um, we spoke about this frag color, this is the RGB value of every pixel. Um, a cool thing also with these uniforms is that they can um, be coupled to your mouse for instance. So instead of having uh, long lines of JavaScript calculating that my mouse should map to the X, to the R, to the something something and apply a color to a div via this style I imported from the GL frag color. Boom. I should probably show it, but yeah. Um, I promised you I would speak to four things. What is the, the last one? Ah, this one. Because just as I was preparing this, um, this kind of um, presentation, Twitter exploded with, um, with this. Oh. So um, 3D canvas, and you can um, rotate it. And the corny thing is that you can also uh, take a pen and draw on this thing and have it in 3D. And it also cuts your spheres in two. So we're quite close to a uh, pretty cool integration of these kind of uh, WebGL powered, super uh, blazingly fast uh, canvases. Um, interleaving with, uh, with HTML. This thing in the middle is an iframe that just takes the CSS uh, transform. And some pressure is not like texture passing or something, it's straight to the browser. That's pretty awesome. Showing that, I of course need to say uh, thumbs up to this guy. Not sure who it is, but he, is, he made that demo and that's pretty awesome. That's all. Should we do Q and A's now? We'll do that after. Yeah. Scary. I'm. Okay. Man, I forgot one thing. Jakob, you need to wait one second. Okay. Because I promised you show to show this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because there is also um, shaders. Hello. had to. When I, when I thought about it, it was a great idea to make it really hard for Lars to come on, but <laughs> yeah, I kind of blew it. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jan. Uh, I don't know about you, no. but I believe in uniforms. Thanks, Lagram. And I was about to say before you had talked, but I, I, I had really high expectations. I thought I was going to say it before he actually said it. So thanks, Lagram. It was really, uh, <laughs> really nice.